What if Goku trained with the Grand Priest in a future Dragon Ball Super Saga? It's definitely a topic that will need to be addressed in the series at some point, so in this video, let's discuss it. So be sure to drop a like as it helps more fans see this video and also subscribe for a lot more videos. Goku has spent the last few years training with Whis, and although he's still got a ton to learn, there might come a circumstance where he needs to ascend higher, further and faster than before. The Grand Prix seems to be a busy guy, taking care of the two Zenos, but maybe he could find the time to train Goku someday. But how could this possibly happen? Well, the Zenos don't like wicked and selfish beings, and they can tell Goku's a pure heart. So he could ask the Grand Prix to summon Goku to his realm for the sake of spending time as friends. This would make sense as the plot point from episode 55 hasn't been brought up again and I doubt the two Zenos are perfectly fulfilled as friends when they're identical. After Goku heard from Whis that the Grand Priest has more command over Ultra Instinct in chapter 68 than he does, he would probably excitedly ask the Grand Priest for training. The Grand Priest may not want to do this, but Zeno may step in and authorise it as he'd like an excuse for Goku to stick around longer and he'd like to see some action from time to time just like in the tournament. Learning of Goku's new training mentor, it would probably spur on Vegeta to become more obsessed with training but that of the destruction techniques under Beerus. If this was part of a saga, a very dangerous threat could emerge somehow and these trainings could prove very useful. In Super Episode 55, there's a few clues that show the Grand Priest already has interest in Goku. Beerus asks Goku to wear something more formal to see Zeno, but when Whis later apologised for Goku's attire, the Grand Priest already knew that Goku always wears his gi all the time. How would the Grand Priest know this unless he'd investigated Goku thoroughly throughout time? Secondly, when Goku is leaving, the Grand Priest tells Whis that, I would like to see Goku again, myself. Isn't it interesting how the Grand Priest is saying he's especially interested in Goku aside from his loyalties to the Zeno, which certainly increases the probability of him teaching Goku someday something. And likewise, Goku would be very interested to be trained by him, as he told Whis he got the feeling the Grand Priest was strong. Whis was impressed that Goku could tell this and verified that the Grand Priest is indeed among the top 5 strongest in all the universes, and Whis is far weaker than the Grand Priest. Who are the other 4 beings? Well at this point, there weren't two Zenos, just one. So it was one Zeno plus the two bodyguards, which is three, and then also Jiren, which is four, and then there's the Grand Priest. Obviously hearing this, Goku knows who the best mentor is for him right now, but we advised Goku not to mention fighting to the Grand Priest. And then of course later on, the Grand Priest was impressed how Goku achieved Ultra Instinct Omen and then complete Ultra Instinct with the silver hair. These events probably only increased his interest in Goku further. If we pretend that Super Dragon Ball Heroes is a parallel universe, Goku may have already briefly trained with the Grand Priest. In Episode 6, Goku definitely seemed to die when the prison planet was exploded, but in Episode 8 it was revealed that the Grand Priest stepped in and saved Goku at the last moment. The Grand Priest was implied to have trained Goku, but it's not confirmed for sure, but he certainly at least helped him recover. However, there are two things which suggest the Grand Priest did train Goku. Firstly, in episode 8, the Grand Priest asks Goku whether he is ready to fight Hearts and his crew. Goku replies, yeah, ready when you are. Why would Goku say that so confidently if he hadn't learned anything from the Grand Priest? Also, when Goku fought Orin shortly after arriving on the battlefield, he could suddenly initiate Ultra Instinct Omen at will, or as before, it only happened in a desperate situation outside of his control. If the Grand Priest did train him, unfortunately it wasn't as impactful as it expected as in the short time they had, he could only help Goku to initiate Omen at will, however, thinking more deeply, you realise it's probably superior training from the Grand Priest as Goku under his guidance got this in a number of hours compared to 6 months of training with Mirus to acquire that same thing. Logically, this shows the Grand Priest is a superior mentor to Mirus and Whis, as he has much more experience, has lived longer, and has higher command over Ultra Instinct. The Grand Priest was impressed how quickly Goku initiated Ultra Instinct Omen and dealt with Orin, so he decided Goku could handle it and he left. Goku then only lost Ultra Instinct Omen when he faced Lagus, who wielded the complete power of Universe 11, and we now know that Ultra Instinct Omen has great stamina issues courtesy of the Moro arc, so the odds were against Goku. The next thing to question is what would the Grand Priest training be like? Well, the Grand Priest would probably be more blunt and harder on Goku than Whis. Because Whis training is troublesome enough, then his father's training would probably be even more dangerous and near impossible to complete. He would also know the physiology of their body, 
how Goku would learn best and other things to a deeper degree than Whis and the other angels. He would use the best route to get Goku to master Ultra Instinct in his base form. Goku would probably run out of stamina whilst training, but this wouldn't surprise the Grand Priest, as he saw this happen in the tournament already, so he'd focus on key control and stamina reserves. I personally would like the Grand Priest to I personally would like the Grand Priest to put Goku on some very unusual and difficult training regime, with activities that seem strange that also take place in some previously unknown realms and chambers to us. Maybe Goku would go to secret places where all the angels are trained from birth, that would be so cool. In Super there hasn't really been a multi-universal threat like in Heroes, which is full of them, so the Grand Priest training Goku hasn't really been needed yet, but someday it might. I'll never forget the moment when Hearts got powered up and it made the Grand Priest gasp. These are special moments that we've missed for a while, a bit of good old tension. Perhaps training with the Grand Priest would either result in expanding the Dragon Ball universes, leading to the introduction of another level of universes, like there being an existence of multiple multiverses. This would be justified as you need very strong opponents to take on disciples of the Grand Priest. There simply aren't fighters or villains in all the universes that we know of at the moment that are much more powerful than Goku even at this point, so they would have to expand in some areas. But Goku isn't likely to surpass the Grand Priest through training anyways, as even Whis is inferior to his father's power. And plus, the Grand Priest through experience may have developed hacks and abilities that brute strength can't overcome. Let me know what you think would happen if Goku trained with the Grand Priest. Today I'm going to be responding to some of your comments from the Why Freezer Wants To Be Taller video. So firstly we have F-Man who said, You know when he got resurrected for a day? If he got taller in general, increasing his reach, he might have been able to KO Goku in that full power punch. Yes, if Frieza had a longer reach than Goku, he would have actually been able to reach Goku before Goku could reach his face. So I think you're right there, man. And then we have Gun Rifle who said he would look like a human dinosaur if that wish was made. Oh yeah, would he have looked a bit like Barney? <laughs> Barney the dinosaur? And lastly we have Mex, who said, but if he increases 5 centimeters, he will also depower himself, because we all know the smaller the villain, the stronger they are in Dragon Ball. Yes, well, it, it wasn't always that way. I mean, you've got Kid Buu, who was ex extremely strong. Emperor Pilaf, he was very weak, despite being very small. But then, of course, you have Zeno, although he's not a villain, he's the strongest. And you have the Grand Priest, the smallest angel. Maybe we're not, you know, there's other ones like Kusu who are very small as well. Often in Dragon Ball, the smaller the being, the stronger they are. It's definitely a reoccurring theme, so that probably would happen actually. So, there's my thoughts on some of your comments, guys. Thanks for watching, and also watch this video in the corner next if you want to learn more about Dragon Ball. Thanks, Kai Kai.